I am joined now by uh, a man I've been very looking forward to speaking to for quite some time, and uh, we're going to talk a bit first of all about the uh, uh, the role uh, that you play, sir, in the slick, stylish, and sexy heist movie Plastic. You play the role of Tarek. Memferda is with us today. How are you doing, man? Hi, I'm well, thanks. Excellent. All right. Um, so let's talk a bit about Plastic first of all. Tell us about the uh, the true story of Plastic and where, where the role of Tarek comes into it and what attracted you to him and, and, and to this role. Well, I mean, there was a lot of uh, creative license in terms of the role of Tarek in that um, the use of guns for a start, you know, in the heist and whatever, um, is not something that actually happened in real life. Yeah, it's not, it's not part of the true story. Um, the guy that actually, um, you know, did the heist I actually spoke with and, um, you know, he, he kind of clarified that that was not the, the, the point. That was not the, um, how it actually happened in real life. Uh, and it was done purely for dramatic purposes in terms of, you know, in, in, in the film itself. And basically, I mean, it, it is based on true events and it is about a group of university students who committed uh, credit card fraud um, to supplement their um, income. And then they accidentally rip off a kind of like a notorious gangster and who basically demands 10 times the amount stolen from him, in which case they decide to target big spenders in Miami in order to get the cash back to him. And, um, and I'm kind of like his main henchman and I get sent out to Miami in hot pursuit. Um, and hence, you know, all the action happens and what have you. There is a lot of action, and um, you mentioned that the uh, the use of guns is actually something that was added to, yeah, sure. to the movie adaptation. So there's there's a lot of creative license there that's that's allowed, which uh, which surprises me. What kind of, do you have to jump through a lot of hoops to to to, to be able to clear those kind of decisions? Um, yeah, well, I mean, the producers have to, yeah. Uh, but in, yeah, in terms of like um, you know being true to the story, um, you know that there had been. It's, it's just that, that you know they had to, in order to get the kind of energy and um, you know the action sequences and, and make it more interesting for the audience. You know these things were added in. Um, I mean the director Julian Gilby, who um, is kind of known for being uh, well, he, he does phenomenal um, you know work with action and explosions and stuff like that. Which uh, you know when it's obviously he was directing and you know it was important for him to have those those aspects to the film. You know, Excellent. Uh, yeah. They've compiled a really impressive cast for this yeah, uh, yeah. movie adaptation. I mean, um, when it comes to uh, to action roles um, um, in general, um, you're obviously extremely experienced yourself. Tell us a little bit about the uh, the young cast that they've assembled. There's a lot of sort of emerging talents in amongst this cast. Um, so who stands out for you um, in it's terms of the people you've had the chance to work with? Yeah. Well, Will, Will Poulter, um, he, he's, he stands out. I mean, he won the uh, BAFTA Rising Star Award. Um, it was in uh, We Are The Millers. And, you know, he did an excellent film called Wild Bill. And now he's in the uh, Maze Runner, which is, like, doing extremely well. Um, and then you've got Alfie Allen from Game of Thrones, um, Thomas Kretschmann, obviously, from, from King Kong and Valkyrie, um, you know, Ed Spielers. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's got a great young cast. And it was nice to be involved with a bright young cast like that, you know, for me, being older. <laughs> um, you know, but it, it was exciting to be cast uh, in the role of Tarek as well by Je Jeremy Zimmerman, who's a casting director. And, um, yeah, I mean, the whole thing went really, really well. And obviously filming that in Miami was, was a dazzling experience as well. No, it must have been incredible. Um, when it comes to action and, and drama, you're, as I say, you're extremely experienced on the big screen and on, and on television as well. In fact, a number of that young cast have already had experience uh, in, in both mediums, really. Um, a lot of popular drama these days has taken the form of TV series, and a lot of action movies, or a lot of action, finds itself on the big screen instead. A bit of a divide, I feel, in uh, in recent years particularly. Do you think this is a good thing? I mean, what's your opinion on the, the emergence of um, TV shows, um, in, in a sense, becoming becoming as popular as movies, in terms of, you know, a spectacle to behold? Um, do you have any sort of preferences in terms of um, what you like to what you like to work on? 
What in terms of medium? Yeah, yeah. What 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 are the differences yeah, well, as a, as an action uh, a drama uh, actor, an experienced one for for yeah. a great number of years? How how have how have the individual genres changed over the years? Well, it has. I mean, a, a lot of a lot of TV is becoming very much like film, even the way that it's shot nowadays. You know, um, but I mean, you know, I've always been, I always had a, a favoritism for film. You know, over TV. Um, because of the fact that you know it's a story, you know it's kind of like you know a lot, lot with a lot of TV series. I kind of I don't tend to watch them really because I haven't got the time to follow and get involved with the characters over a long, long you know time of episode after episode. Uh, so you know with a film, you've got a beginning, you've got a middle, and you've got an end. You know, so you follow the protagonist throughout the story. There's a there's a definite arc there which you can identify with and go with. Um, and it, it, you tend to have a kind of like an individual that you can follow or you can, you, can, you can attach yourself to and go on the journey with. Whereas in TV, because it's kind of like more kind of an of a ensemble sort of casting, um, you know, it's, I, I don't find it as exciting. I don't find it as, you know, I, and I don't have the time to devote to a series, you know, just to follow yeah. a series. And that, that for me creates a problem because I would love to if I had the time. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I don't. But, you know, recently, I've, it's funny because, I mean, recently I've got, I've got addicted to Nashville, uh, which is, uh, you know, about country music, you know, and uh, I've been watching that with my wife and we're kind of both really into it. And I quite like country music. And, uh, you know, so I've, I've found out I've made time for that. And when I haven't, I've gone out and bought the box set, you know, and I, when I do get a time, I, you know, I, I do put it on and watch an episode of it. And it does kind of, I do find it relaxing. Yeah. And, um, so, so in that respect, yeah, I mean, TV can also be very relaxing in that it doesn't draw you in so quickly and, uh, you know, you don't get too absorbed about what's going to happen to that character. You just, you know, you, you can just kind of sit back and just watch what happens, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. That's good. In that's an interesting way of looking at it. Good insight, actually. I like that. I, I like that I am watching a, a lot more TV because it's just so accessible now with the likes of Netflix and things like that. Yeah. Um, and it's there alongside movies. It's all there sort of bundled in together, which, you know, you, you know, growing up during the 90s, hiring videos for £5 a pop, you just wouldn't imagine it. Do you know what I mean? No. Um, it's amazing stuff. Let's talk about yourself as an actor now, man. I've heard people use the words magnetism, charisma, rightly so multiple times when talking about you. Have you always been able to sort of uh, command audiences in this way? Is this something that was uh, uh, instilled in you? Is this something that uh, you learned uh, whilst training? Tell us a bit about your educational background and getting into the industry and um, how you've managed to sort of encompass, encapsulate these qualities in your roles. Yeah. Well, I mean, as far back as I can remember, I've kind of always been the entertainer, as it were, at family functions and as a child. My, my my mother used to kind of have me stand on a chair and recite poetry and you know do a song and a dance you know so I guess I guess the the uh, you know the the um, kind of performance from a performance point of view that's always kind of been innate in me um, in terms of like having you know I don't know I guess people describing me as having charisma or or you know uh, sort of certain presence I think that's something that you know you kind of acquire. Um, it's probably to do with my physicality as well. I'm six two. I'm a big guy, you know. Um, so you know, I, I kind of <laughs> hard to avoid, I guess. <laughs> so from, from that point of perspective as well, I, I think you know that's important. Especially, I mean, for stage, it's very important to kind of have that kind of physicality. Not so much in film, and hence, you know, I did my initial training at Lambda, which is like a fantastic, you know, world renowned, um, you know, school, drama school, and uh, you know, and, and the first thing they said to us, uh, you know, at drama school was. We, we, you're not here to learn how to act. We can't teach you that. That's an innate, you know, innate thing, you know, within you, yeah? Um, he goes, all we can do is we can actually channel the talent that you have, the God-given talent that you have, and, uh, you know, so you can make best use of, of it in the industry, as it were. And I think that, that that is so true. But, you know, I mean, I would, I would advise, you know, anyone that wants to do get into acting, I would say to them to, to pursue formal training, because it does help. It does help hone in, you know, your 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 you know your your um your talent and your in, and develop your craft, you know. And it doesn't happen overnight. It, it, acting takes time, and I think a lot of people become a bit complacent with it. They don't they don't realize how much time it actually takes. You know, you have to be persistent and you have to be focused on your goal of of, of becoming an actor. And also, you know, you also have to. 
you mustn't be afraid of failure, you know, and that's one thing that I've, I, you know, I've always kind of been, I'm quite strong, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't take rejection personally, you know, a lot of people do, or, you know, those, those people that have given up, um, I mean, in the class of like 30 students, 38 students that I was in, um, I think only two or three of us are still acting, you know, yeah. um, and, you know, it's, it's a real achievement to kind of get into Lambda and for, for people to kind of do that training and then, you know, not pursue what they're doing afterwards, you know, you know, not pursue acting, um, you know, it's kind of sad, you know. Um, it came it came quite late in the day for me because, I, you know, I, I mean, I, I basically my first degree is in psychology, uh, which I studied at University of London, and then I went on to do a master's degree in business, um, you know, purely because my father was he's dead set against me doing acting. He didn't see it as a form of, you know, a stable career. And he wanted me to get into business. He was a businessman himself, and he kind of wanted me to, kind of, you know, follow in his footsteps. Um, but you know, it was innate in me, and it was it always has been, and you know, this need to, you know, to perform. Um, so in the end, I kind of like did all that, and then when I did a postgraduate as well. You know? That's amazing stuff. Then, yeah. so you, it, with all that together, you're actually sort of incredibly educated. But I, I bet that mm. there have been moments during your acting career where your knowledge of psychology and definitely business have definitely paid off? Oh, definitely. Well, I mean, the, the, the psychology has kind of always been there, you know, when it comes mm. to like, analysing, you know, characters, um, you know, that's always been there. When you're preparing for a role, you know, there's certain kind of idiosyncratic, you know, things that you can bring to the character, you know, uh, and also... You know, I guess I can identify clues from the script about what the character's personality is going to be like, and 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 kind of like develop it, you know, accordingly, um, rather than you know, was have a have a have a have a way into the psyche of the character, trying to understand the different layers, rather than just taking it at what the writers, you know, what the, the writer will write it in a certain way, and he will intend for the role to be that the way that it is, but it's up to you as an actor to kind of, to kind of take that. And then bring what you can to it, you know. Yeah. And having a psychological, you know, psychology background, um, that enables me to do that. It enables me to research more. I mean, if I'm playing a not non-fictitious role, then I'll research and gather as much information about that person as possible. It's similar to like what I did with uh, the role of uh, Kamal Hanna in The Devil's Double, because that guy actually existed. Yeah, I did all the research. I found out about him, his family. I spoke to Latif Yahia. Who was the actual? You know, he was the the um, the double for um, you know Tanev Hussein's son, the real life double of you know um, of him. And I spoke with him at great length about you know, did you know Kamahana? What did you think of him? How was he in certain situations? You know, what was his family like? You know, I learned some stuff about him, and then I kind of brought that you know that element to it. You know, and it, and it, it, it does work when you do a lot of research and you do you do your work. People can see it on screen. Good. It, does, it does work, yeah. I bet it does. I bet that all that experience from the past, even before your acting career, pays off. I think I've, I've had the I've had the pleasure of speaking to um, a lot of great actors lately, and the the, the similarity that 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 uh, between between all of you is that um, the journey is is every bit as important as the destination. I think long before um, people uh, get their first major roles on stage, on screen, whatever it is, um, yeah. they've already picked up. A lot of really valuable experience just during their life's journey, whether that's you know having a different job, studying a different course. So uh, I think it was a, a good idea uh, in your case to, to to get that educational background because it's obviously paid off. And um, this yeah. this year, for example, an incredibly busy year for you. Um, yeah. What uh, what are the what are the going forward though? What other sort of challenges can you see yourself taking on in the future? What's 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 the next goal? The next ambition for you? Well, I mean, going back to what you say in terms of like bringing my education into what I'm doing now, um, you know, the business aspect of it, the, you know, having a master's in business administration has certainly helped because it now enables me to, you know, I'm not just a thespian, as it were, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying, you know, learning about producing, you know, it gives me a different buzz to act in, in that you're involved in the creative decision making, um, you know, I have, you know, things like, you know, I can choose, you know, I can have a say in the choice of cast. I have a say in the choice of distributor that we, we take on and the choice of sales agent that we take on. Uh, talking to investors and financiers, sorting out legal side of things. All this, you know, the whole collaborative, 
you know, exercise of doing all this, it, I find really intriguing. And I'm and I'm and I'm now currently um, I'm doing a joint venture with uh, a company in in the states. Uh, we do, we're going to be doing free horror films. Uh, we did a, a film called True for Dare recently, which was at the uh, Fright Fest Festival, and it won. It's, it's, it's won over twenty nine, about thirty awards now. Um, you know, at various festivals up and down the country, well, in the states and and, and in Europe. Um, so you know, I find all that exciting. So now we're doing this other, you know, this this project where. Um, it's, it's about uh, uh, well, we, we kind of do it. It's, it's quite a unique um, approach in that what we've done is uh, one way of funding the film is basically we we have people contribute to to being you know being on the film or you know having a prop from the film or you know a, 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 you know a credit of some some sort you know on the film and uh, and depending on where they live in the United States, we will pin that down on the actual map of the US and that will determine what route we take um, in doing the film, if, if you know what I mean. Because it's basically about, it's, it's a road movie and it, you know, it's going to be shot in a, a, a cross-country um, kind of uh, travel through, you know, on, on an RV throughout the States. And then depending on, we've actually done, we've done it now, we've raised the money and we're going to be going to California, New Mexico, Arizona, Texas, Alabama, Ohio, that's that's the route he's taking because that's the that's where the the majority of fan base for that horror you know for for the horror uh, genre are in terms of like you know interest for these for these films that we're doing. I so love that, that idea. I yes, love that idea. It's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's very it's very innovative, you know. And it's yeah. uh, and then the thing is, what we're doing is the 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 journey from what position let's say like point one to point two. That would be one film, and then the journey from point two to point you know, the return journey will be the other film. It'll be a different route, but it'd be a, you know it'd be the second film. And at the same time, we're going to have a documentary um, unit that are basically going to follow our path for both the films. So we're also going to release a feature length documentary about how to make an independent movie and give people insights into you know. Um, oh, the trials and tribulations of achieving that, you know? Superb. I think that's great. I mean, what an exciting project. And uh, as you said, innovative is the word there. Fantastic idea. Um, yeah. You are absolutely welcome to come back and chat to me again, maybe even during that journey or at the end of it. Love to hear more about that, Mem, most definitely. Yeah. Okay. Um, a very, very busy time ahead for you then. Um, very it's, exciting yeah, stuff. I'm, I'm not going on the journey myself. Um, you, know, you know, I'm letting them kind of, you know, sort it out, let, letting my director and, and uh, you know, execs kind of sort that out. But, yeah, I mean, it is. It's exciting. And I'm currently filming. Um, I'm right in the middle of filming, in fact. So I've got a day off today. Um, but I'm filming with Drew Barrymore and Tony Collette, um, which is, like, you know, fantastic. It's so surreal. Uh, we're doing a film called Miss You Already, uh, which is like a, a, you know, strong and kind of emotional drama. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm really enjoying doing that. I just got back from Yorkshire. We're filming up in Yorkshire for a while. Just got back, and I've got a few more London dates, a um, couple of good scenes with uh, Drew Barrymore left to do, which I'm looking forward to. So, you know, that's what I'm saying. It, you know, you never know what journey, journey acting is going to take you on. Yeah. Um, but one thing you need to do is, is kind of have a, you know, well, skin of a rhinoceros in terms of, like, you know, not, not to take rejection uh, personally and to just persevere it's like it's like anything. You want to be a success in anything in life. You have to chase it and you have to pursue, and you know you have to be fully committed to it. I could not agree more, sir. Thank you so much. I think that's fantastic advice. Um, have yourself a fantastic day. Then uh, look forward to those uh, scenes with Drew Barrymore and your journey across America. The American dream awaits. <laughs> um, have a fantastic time, mate. And um, when you get some time, check in with us again. Let us know how you're doing. I will do, Chris. Cheers, right. man. All the best, man. Okay, mate. Take care. Bye-bye.